Today we're going to go over direct and inverse variation. You ready, class? Yeah! Game up? Yeah! Alright, pretty good. Next time, do it together. Okay. So, today we're going to do direct and inverse variation. The definition of direct variation, direct variation, is marked by the following formula. Direct variation means... Okay, first write this formula. The way you'd say this is y varies directly as x, or y is proportional to x. If you see varies directly, varies directly, see it here? You see varies directly, or y is proportional, what it basically means is as y goes up, x goes up. All right, so think of the things that you know. When one thing goes up, another thing goes up. That, the technical term for that is varies directly. All right? So what happens is y is going up and x is going up, and this k stands for constant. I don't know why it's k, like they can't spell constant, but uh, yeah. So this is a constant term. So pretend you can't spell and you're, you think, you know, cat is spelled k-a-t and constant is spelled with a k also. All right, so if I said y varies directly as x, this would be your formula. If I said a varies directly as b, what would your formula be? A varies directly as B. A equals KB. Yeah, A equals KB. Right? This would be A varies directly as B. Or A is proportional to B. Okay? So now, we'll leave that there. It says, the tension T in a spring varies directly as the distance X it is stretched. Stretch. So T varies directly as X. So T equals k. kx. Right. So the formula goes t equals kx. So let's think about a string, or, or, a, or a spring, I should say. Okay. Would you agree that the tension in the spring is more when you stretch it more? When you stretch a spring, yeah. and it goes like that, the tension is more when you pull it. So that's what it means, varies directly. The more you stretch it, the more tension. The more tension. Yeah, the more distance, the more tension. Okay, so here's the problem. So first step, when you see direct varies directly, you think of a formula like, like this. You create your formula. Okay, so the next step is to plug in and find our constant. The constant's the key, all right? So if you want to write that in your notes, find, you can write, find the constant. Determine the constant. So let's look at it. If t equals 8 when x equals 2, we plug in 8 and 2. So instead of t, what are we going to write? 8. 8, good. 8. And we are looking for k. Instead of x, what are we going to write? 2. Two. <laughs> Solve for k. Bless you. Solve for k. Divide both sides by 2. Divide both sides by 2. Good. k equals 4. k equals 4. So why is 8 the constant? Oh, 8 is not the constant. 8 is t. 8 is t. Oh, All right. So we plug in our first scenario to determine what k is. So now we have k. The constant is 4, 4 is not going to change. And now from here, we rewrite the equation. t equals kx, but t equals 4x. All right. So we have, we have our new equation with a constant known. Is that a question? No? OK. Now it's saying, find t when x is 4. We're done. Yeah, we said. Plug 4 into x and we're done. Okay, so x equals 4 is going to go into here. So t equals 4 times 4 equals 16. Problem solved. Oh. Yeah, it's, I, someone said it's easy. Like, it's easy if you know what you're doing. It's, it's process oriented. Are you ready to try one yourself?
Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to erase this magically and show a new problem. All right, here we go. Whoa! Oh my god! How did that happen? Did someone write that? Knock me out? Okay, never mind. Okay. Anyone read the Da Vinci Code and watch the movie? Anyone? No. Okay. So, but this is an interesting observation. I read the book. It's good. Da Vinci observed that a person's height varies directly as the width of their shoulders. Stop there. Height varies directly as shoulders. So what's the formula? Height, what do you want to call height? H. H, H varies directly as... KS. KS, S for shoulders. Okay, you want to do width or S? Let's do width. Yeah, let's do width. We did height. We're going to do width. So KW. 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 Yeah. <coughs> Good. H equals KW. All right, so next sentence. If a person 70 inches tall, so that's their height, has a shoulder width of 17.5 inches. Stop there. So 70 inches tall, where does that go? H. 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 Good. 70 equals... What? K, K times 17.5. K times 17.5. I need a calculator person. All right. So what do we do to both sides? Divide by 17.5. Can you tell us what that is, please? You got it. Four. Again. How about that? K equals four. Okay. Who remembers the next step? Yeah, yeah. Anyone else remember the next step? Once we got our K? Uh, plug, it, plug it in. Plug it into the original equation. Um, duh. Right? No, don't say duh, you're learning. It's cool. It's cool. H equals K dub. H equals 4 dub. Bull you. Okay. <laughs> Bull you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, what's the height of someone whose shoulder width is 16? So, 4 times 16. So, 4 times 16. Correct. So, let's plug it in. H equals 4 times our new width of the shoulders is 16 inches across. 4 times 16, you know, is? 64. 64. Quick math. H equals 64. 64 what? Inches. Inches. Duh. Any questions on direct variation? No. Nope. no. That's the idea. All right, you want to do a different problem now? It's going to be inverse variation. Same type of problem. All right? So I'm going to huff and pluff and blow this problem off the board. Ready? 